Hello, everybody. I'm Angela Walters. Welcome to this week's live chat. I'm excited to talk to you about a topic I haven't actually covered before in a class or a video or a tutorial. We're going to be talking about how to quilt skies and wind and clouds. And if you're wondering how this even comes about, before I go live every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central, about a half hour before, I get onto the video and I type chat with some of my buddies that are waiting for the live video as well, and this was a request. So if you have a request for a live chat, that's a great way to get it through. Join us before the live chat for some text chatting. It's, it's pretty fun. We come up with all sorts of weird stuff. We got talking about QuiltCon and how cold it is, which is why I have a scarf on, even though I'm indoors. I hope wherever you are that you are staying warm. And if you're watching this live, as I go through my little presentation, show you some quilting design ideas, if you have any questions, be sure to type those out because Jessica's here, as always, to write them down for me so I can answer them live. That's kind of the one of the benefits of catching it live. Although, I know real life gets in the way of all our quilting time, so if you're not watching this live, no worries. You can leave your comments or your questions in the comment section. I get on there from time to time to answer them, and other quilters are very helpful as well. But before we get to the uh, presentation, a couple of things I have to show you. It's almost Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day, so if you have a special quilty bestie person, friend, that you want to make a project for, I got a couple great ideas. First of all, this was from Midnight Quilter last year, actually, but it's the Quilt Love. It's a cute little wall hanging um, quilt that's available in different colors, or you can get the pattern. Um, description or In the description box, there's links to this. Or how about an adorable pillow? You can do the Take Heart pillow. So if you want to make a quick little project to put a little love in the air, really fun and easy. Both of these would be great options. Um, again, they're in the description box below, and I have kits or just patterns available should you want to do that. Um, and so it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm going to switch over to my pictures real quick. One second. I um, want to let you know that Quilt Walk is going to be happening. I totally forgot that I should be promoting this until during the type chat somebody mentioned it. So save the date. June 18th is our Quilt Walk. We're located in Liberty, Missouri, the middle of the U.S., right by Kansas City, Missouri, only 45 minutes from Missouri Star Quilt Company. And every year we have a Quilt Walk, which is the event where we have you go to different shops in our town and pick up free quilt blocks to make a pattern and it's just a really good fun event so if you're going to be in the area or you live in the area i hope you'll put that on and save the date for that okay all that aside now let's talk about wind and skies not cloudy or not like snowy skies i know some of you have a lot of snow we're not talking about that we're talking about um, quilting those kind of areas and i know it's not every quilt that's going to be for that so but there are those quilts that come across where you're like oh I want this to look like a sky or I want a nice texture but let's start with clouds clouds are one of those tricky things to quilt because if you draw it out you're like okay that's what a cloud looks like but when you quilt it it doesn't quite look the same remember when we're looking at a quilt the unquilted area is going to kind of pop out and in a cloud it's not going to look quite right so here is how well that's not where I want to be this is where I want to be this is how I would draw a cloud, right? Pretty cute, know what that is, but quilting that's not gonna give the same effect. And in fact, for the longest time, I avoided quilting clouds because I just couldn't get it to look quite right. And then after playing with it for a while, I found out that it's just better if you make it directional, give it a bottom and then a top. And then to keep that middle area from being so unquilted, adding a little bit more detail in there is gonna keep it from being just this big blob of unquilted space. So. This is really rough, but you know, I'm sure you guys get what I'm saying here. So I'm gonna start at one side. I'm gonna make my first partial arc, but then backtrack and make another one on top. And so they're gonna look kind of stacked and it's gonna kind of just give it that, that more cloud-like effect when you're quilting. Now I do have quilted examples to show you, so don't worry about that. Um, and then I kind of finished where I started quilting back to where I was. We'll see how we use this in actual design ideas. But just know that you can make this as big by adding more of those arcs on top of each other, or you can make it look more organic by quilting wavier lines or, or different kind of shapes. But the same technique is there. I'm backtracking so they look like they're stacked on top of each other to, ke to keep it from just being that big blob of unquilted area. So when we're looking at quilting areas on panels or quilts that are supposed to represent skies or wind, what we really need to think is, do I want it? to have just a nice consistent texture or do I want there to be like a wow factor to it? And it really depends on the quilt you're working on. And so I have some examples, but I also quilted some samples of the design ideas I was gonna show you and then took some step-by-step -step pictures. So I'm gonna talk you through those. 
Um, if you're like, oh, I'll never remember that, don't worry, this video stays on my YouTube channel, so you can come back and refer to it later and follow along. So first of all, here's an example of those clouds kind of nestled into some swirls, a little bit more drawn out, not so stacked on top of each other, but still the same basic idea. I have my arcs that kind of travel in, and it's that one-sided uh, bit to it. And I threw in a couple of swirls and some straight lines, but we're gonna, we're gonna see a little bit more about that. But just know that I think, in my opinion, and I am the expert in my opinion, this is the best way to quilt a cloud. Now when you're looking at skies, like I said, we're, we're wanting that nice, consistent texture. If I just want it to kind of, I don't know, blend in. Sometimes when we're working with panels that are very ornate or detailed, uh, we can be worried, or I can be worried that the quilting is gonna take away from that. One question that was in the type chat before we started was somebody was saying that they have a panel with a fish on it and they love the fish and how do they quilt it so it doesn't take away from the fish? This is gonna be the trick, something nice and consistent because if there's nothing standing out, your eyes just kind of go through the quilting and see what it's supposed to see. So you can still see the Grand Canyon um, words, you can still see that detail and so think consistent texture and that just means trying to keep the spacing the same but you can have fun with it. You can do some different things. So in this particular example, I kind of followed the panel. It kind of already had the sky going up at an angle. That'd be kind of fun to quilt it so that it goes up at that diagonal, just to give it a little bit more of that perspective. So consistent spacing doesn't even matter what spacing you want to use. Even though I like my quilts quilted to death, quarter inch spacing is kind of what I tend to use because I can run the foot of my machine along that previously quilted line but you can definitely spread this out if you want it to be less dense or if you don't love the person as much. No, I'm just kidding, but it'll definitely be a little bit quicker for you. So think consistent texture. But within that idea, we can have so much fun creating different variations. So first of all, let's talk about how to combine those straight lines with those clouds to kind of look like they're popping out. Um, this is really fun to do. I like to do this in medium areas or maybe even larger areas because those clouds are gonna break up those straight lines and keep me from having to quilt a straight line over the whole area. So throwing those clouds in every once in a while is gonna do that. And you can really have fun with this. I could make the lines at the bottom closer together to kind of give it that look of depth or perspective. I could put more clouds at the bottom and then it gets sunnier or less clouds up towards the top. I can make them little. Really, you can do anything you want. Um, so depending on the quilt, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's kind of break this down. So I'm starting from the bottom of my area. Since I'm gonna be tacking these clouds on, I, I need to kind of start from the bottom and work up. I don't want upside down clouds. So I'm just doing some straight line quilting, quilting to the edge, traveling, coming back, because that is that nice consistent texture that I kind of want in the sky. And so, I'll start adding those lines again with the spacing that you prefer, but then at a random point, whenever I'm ready, I'm gonna stop at a random point, like I have here, and begin quilting a, a cloud just up into that space. So I decided that about a third of the way through was gonna be good. So from there, I quilted my cloud coming back to that line. So here's my first arc, and then my next one, I had that little backtrack there, and continuing on until I'm touching that line I quilted. So basically going and coming back. Now from this point, you have an option. I could start filling in my back and or my straight lines on that side of my cloud, or I can travel along the edge of my cloud to get to where I can move on to the rest of it. Traveling is just gonna help give that cloud more detail, and especially if you're using a matching thread color, it's not gonna look um, very noticeable. I'm using a darker, slightly contrasting thread because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So just know that if you're using a regular thread color that blended in, you wouldn't see quite that detail. But here, I've traveled along the top of my cloud to get back in front so I can continue on quilting my straight lines. So just throwing that in there. Now, as I start filling in with those straight lines, I'm gonna run into that cloud. Well, I don't wanna travel over and then travel back. I'm just gonna keep filling in that one side until it fills up and then work on the other. Again, you might handle this a little bit different, depends on how many clouds you have going or what's going on with your quilting machine or what, what you feel comfortable doing. Um, but for the most part, I'm just gonna fill in the area I'm at and then get over and then do the rest. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna fill in to the right of that cloud. What makes this work, what makes these uh, clouds look like they're popping out of the sky is the traveling. So when I run in to that cloud, I'm gonna travel along the edge and then echo back. And so that's gonna really make that cloud kinda just stand out a little bit against those straight lines. And 
Again, just some more, more echoing, more traveling until I get to the top. And you can see here, I've now filled into the right and my next line goes all the way across and so now it's time to fill into the left of the cloud. This is up to you. You could continue on going up and come back and get that later, but if you've watched any of my videos or any of my live chats, you know I love to handle those gaps while I'm there because I will probably forget. I don't want to get done with the quilt and realize that now I have this big gap. So I'm going to go in and fill next to it. Again, just traveling down, echoing, traveling along the edge of that cloud and coming back. And what that's going to give us is that cloud look like, looks like it's just popping out of the sky. Now, even though I'm doing this with straight lines because I You'll see the quilt I used on here in a second. I just want that kind of geometric look. You could do this with wavy lines, gently wavy lines if you want. Um, you can really do this with any kind of straight or horizontal design. And I'm going to add lines, and then when I'm ready to add another one, I'm going to think, geez, this is a good place. I need to stop, get a drink of wine, add my, add my cloud. I'm going to do the same thing, closing my cloud, returning back to my point or where, my line where I started. And again, like you can see here, you can add multiple arcs if you want. You can make it bigger. You can even come back later if you're like, oh, I want to add a little bit more and, and add more to it. But this time, I'm going to go ahead and fill into the side of the cloud before I move on. So I'm going to echo back and forth, traveling along the edge. Again, that's key. That's what's going to make it look like it's popping out. And then as soon as I get to the top, then continue on to the other side and do the same. So here you can see I got to the other side, traveled down, and then continuing on. I decided to add a more, I'm going to go back here so you can see. So if you look at the little cloud, I thought it was a little bit unquilted. Didn't love how it looked, so I went back and added just a little, another arc in there just to change it up. So you can have fun with this. Come up with your own, your own style. They don't have to be so tall. They can be more drawn out. But you can, like I said, add to it while you're going. And then just more echo lines. So I'm just kind of working my way up, throwing in those clouds randomly, and filling it in. More echo lines. And so until you're done. And so here we can see this on an actual quilt. So like I said, this is great for bigger, wider areas. I don't want to do this in such a narrow area because I won't really have room for a lot of clouds. And if I have to make the clouds too small, they're not going to really stand out against those straight lines. So I guess that would be a point to make. If, you're, if your straight lines are about a quarter inch apart, make sure your clouds are at least a half inch or bigger. You want it to look noticeable against those lines. We're going to use that contrast to do that. And so again, I want a little bit wider areas where I can throw in a few of them. Of course, you don't have to throw in a lot. One, two, you know, who, who determines how many clouds there are in the sky? It's totally fine. All right, the next one that I love, and this is unusual, so just hear me out on this. This is the merged lines design, and it's from my book, Shape by Shape Quilting. And this is one of those designs that once you get the hang of it, it's much easier to quilt than it looks. The reason I love it for skies is because it has consistent texture, the spacing is the same, but it has a little bit of interest. It's not just your straight lines. It has some cur slight curves and echoing there still, and it just looks really fun. And depending on how dense you quilt this, you can make it look like a tiny filler or like a bigger all over design. The one thing about this design is it works well in medium areas, medium to small areas. Um, I. It can work in larger areas, and I'll show you an example, but for the most part, when you're starting out, like six inches-ish around there will be, will be a good place to start. So let's see how this breaks down. I think if you haven't seen this before, you're gonna see how easy it is. So starting from the top of my area, about a quarter or a half inch down on the left side, I'm gonna quilt a line that echoes the top, and at a random point, whenever I'm ready, whenever I'm feeling froggy, I'm gonna jump, and I'm gonna angle down and then flatten off and continue on. So it's one line, but just one change of height, right? And that, that angling down can be steep, it can be long, it can be shallow, whatever your little heart enjoys. I just want one side that's higher than the other. You'll know you've done this correctly if you have something that looks like a pan and a handle at the top. So now I have my area above the line that I wanna fill in. Just like I did with those clouds, I'm gonna handle all those gaps while I'm there and I'm gonna fill it in by traveling and echoing the line I just quilted. So I'm gonna travel up along the edge, echo until I run into the top, and we'll see that first line right there. So basically, I, I have my line, I'm just gonna start echoing and filling in that area. And so I'm gonna do it again, traveling and echoing until the whole thing is filled in. Right, so far so good, right? That's no big deal. Now we're gonna repeat that. So I'm gonna travel down along the edge until I get about a quarter inch or a half inch below my quilting 
And I'm going to do the same thing, quilt another line in the opposite direction, but at a random point, you know what to do. I'm going to angle down and flatten out. And so it's going to look, oh, here I've traveled down, and now we're going to see what it looks like. So here you can see that horizontal line, curve down, and flatten out. The reason I love this is you don't have to worry about it being so perfectly straight, because when it's all done, it has this kind of organic look. I hate to use the word organic, but it does. It has this kind of, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. So I wouldn't even necessarily worry about using a ruler here unless you really are worried about it. I just want that nice curve to it. So if you use a ruler, make sure you still get that curve. And now I'm going to fill in the area above the line, right? So we're just following these same steps over and over again. So I'm going to travel and echo, travel and echo. So here we can see that first one traveling. I'm running into the previously quilted line. And I'm going to do it again, travel and echo. And it's that traveling along that previously quilted line that's going to make these lines look like they're going in and around each other. So we can see here what that's going to look like. You can travel the top side, you can or echo the top side. You can quilt some straight lines. Doesn't matter what you put in that area. Just try to keep the spacing consistent and fill it in. That's the most important thing. And once it's filled in, we're going to do the same thing again traveling down till I'm about a quarter inch below my quilted line, going over, angling, and continuing on. So here I'm down to that point, and there's my next line. Now as you get comfortable with this design and you have a little bit more brain space to think through the next couple steps, I would try to vary the areas that you're putting your angles. It's, it looks a lot more interesting if they're in different spots, so don't always put them in the same spot. If you're like, I'm still trying to like breathe and quilt, then don't worry, put it wherever you want. But once I have that space, I'm gonna fill it in using traveling and echoing to fill in that gap. The most important thing here, I'm just trying to keep the spacing consistent. I don't necessarily want one area of this design to stand out. I want that nice all over texture that comes with that consistent spacing. Again, using the quarter inch echoing is really nice because I can use the edge of my foot but this also looks very, very nice if you have half inch echoes too. It still looks great. Then I've filled in that area, I've added my next line, and I've echoed above it and continued on. And so now you're starting to see this kind of effect where these lines look like they're going in and amongst each other. And this is definitely one of those designs you're not gonna really know what it looks like until it's done. So for those of you that are like planners out there, <laughs> just know it'll look cool, uh, but you're not sure exactly what it'll look like. Now let's see what the, and I'm going to keep going filling in that area, but let's see what it looks like on an actual quilt. This right here is a perfect space to use this design in that blue because it is more narrow. Even though it's irregularly shaped, it doesn't matter, right? I'm still going to go to my edge of my area, travel along the end here. It just happens to be the white part of the fabric and then continue on. And so it just gives it that, I don't know, it's just a different kind of look, a little un unexpected, a little different. Um, without taking away from the rest of it. And then if you see in those white areas where those are the clouds, some of that idea of where we're adding our, our arcs and kind of stacking them on top of each other. The reason this doesn't really work great in large areas, it does work great in large areas. The reason I don't encourage you to start with large areas is you have to take several kind of dips because that's a long line to quilt. You won't get as much. And so when you start adding more turns, it gets a little bit trickier to fill in. But just know as you go, if you end up with it stuck with an area, you can break thread and move on, but it just looks really cool. So here, if you kind of look at the lines, you can see they're going kind of up or going up and down. I'm kind of playing around and adding more of those changes of direction. But again, in the beginning, I would definitely stick with just the one change in direction, the six inch-ish size area and fill it in. And I think that will help you get the design idea down and then you can build off of it. I just loved it so much, I took, I took several pictures, but I limited myself to two, so just kind of fun. All right, but for quilts where you want a little bit more of a whimsical look with those clouds, you can nestle them in among some swirls. So this is gonna, it's, it's fun, it's pretty, it's not so formal, I think, it's just, like I said, whimsical. So kids' quilts, even landscape quilts, it could work, but I love how combining it with the swirls. The trick here is I want all my swirls to move horizontally or in the same direction with the area to look like wind. So let's kind of see what that looks like. Now, if you've taken the swirl free motion challenge, you've probably seen how to quilt some different swirls here. This one's gonna be longer, but it doesn't have to be a certain shape. So I added a little bit of wave here. We're gonna see here in a second how you can make it straight. And I'm gonna end in that swirl and then I'm gonna echo it. So basically I'm beginning my swirl, but this is also gonna be the platform 
to my cloud. So I'm going to have my clouds on top of my swirls. Just like I kind of already did with the straight lines, I'm just using a slightly different idea here. And I'm going to echo it until it's, until it's the size I like. Again, you can echo as many times as you'd like, trying to keep the spacing somewhat consistent. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to stop and start quilting my cloud, just like I did with the straight lines, except now I'm on a swirl. And I'm going to handle this the same way as well. As I start filling in around it with more swirls, I'm just going to make sure I use echoing when I run into the clouds and use those um, echo lines to kind of fill in between. So here I've worked my way back. I added another little bit to the cloud. If you look here, I was like, oh, it needs a little bit more. So added another one. And then I'm like, that looks good. And then I'll fill in. So again, to the left of that, you can see those lines that are generally echoing the swirl, traveling along the edge, and filling in that spot. So the hardest part with this is we're not following such a um, regimented routine, like straight line, straight line, straight line. We're going to just use echoing and swirls to fill in those gaps. So just be mindful of the gaps and, and fill them in. I can add more swirls. Again, I'm keeping them horizontal, nice and long, to kind of look like wind. And then when you have those swirls, you're going to have little areas in between them, little gaps, and we're going to use echoing to fill it in. So here we can see that little weird space in between the edge of the swirl and the edge of the area. I'm just going to put some echo lines and fill it in, traveling along the edge and then moving on. So I'm making sure that as I progress down, I'm handling any gaps while I'm there. Again, with echo lines, more swirls, doesn't matter. And then here you can see I filled in that whole area. As I progress through the quilt, especially if I'm on my long arm, I'm trying really hard to keep it um, parallel on both sides. I don't want to fill in this side and have the other side be up too high. I just want to kind of build off it as I go. And then at some point when I'm ready, I do need to be able to add my my um, cloud though, right? And I'm starting from the top down, which is different than I did in the beginning. I'm not going bottom up. So I have to make sure I give myself some room to add my cloud. So I quilted a swirl, and then my next line is just going to go across and leave a nice little gap so I can put my cloud in there and then fill in around it. Did you think you'd ever hear somebody talk about quilting clouds so much? I never thought I would. Anyway, there's my little cloud nestled in there, and then I have my gaps around it. How am I going to handle it? You know, I'm going to put swirls, echo lines, whatever it takes to fill it in, trying to keep the spacing consistent, and then moving on. And that's how we're going to get those clouds to look like they're just nestled in the wind, being blown along the wind. Here's an example of that on a panel um, that I, it was great because I had loaded this quilt, and I'm like, I'm going to do all sorts of sky designs on here. And uh, Again, it kind of works. You can see the little pops of clouds here and there, the swirls all going the same direction, um, the consistent spacing between the swirls. It's just, I think it's cute and whimsical and really fun. And the great thing is, if you start out with this and it's not going so great, quilt a cloud or two and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go to the swirls. No problem. You don't have to commit to the whole thing. You can also be more directional about your swirls. And so this is just a, a picture of it. I didn't really take a step by step of this one. But basically, if I want to quilt my swirls in a direction, it's going to draw my eye to a certain area. So if there's something on the quilt that I want to draw the eye to or wrap around, I can use swirls to do that. And the sky is an option for that as well. And so when I'm quilting that swirl, it's going kind of wrapping around. And then you're going to fill in the rest. And I just use two different fillers, one on each side, one with wavy lines and one with straight lines, just to show you a little bit of the difference. So if you want that swirl to not stand out so much, to be a little bit more subtle, you can use the wavy lines, or if you really want it to look like the wind is blowing through, you can use some straight lines. It, the filler that you put around it is going to determine what you see. All right, we can leave the clouds out altogether. So we already kind of said, you know, you don't have to put clouds in here. You can make it a little bit more, this is kind of like the in between the straight lines and the wavy lines. This is kind of like the in between. And again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm quilting my swirls. I'm, you know, echoing the space in between them. I'm just keeping it really kind of flat, not a whole lot of wave except for the swirls. I think this would look good on like a artistic kind of quilt or um, something that looks like it's painted or I don't, I can't, I can see it in my head what I'm thinking of. I know you can't read my head, so it would look, it would look good on a lot of quilts. So I'm going to start the swirl the same way. The biggest difference is going to be the beginning of that swirl is going to be pretty flat. It doesn't have to be stick straight. It can have a little bit of wave to it, but I don't want a whole lot of curve. I don't want movement there. I just want those swirls to pop out and be more about that than the whole piece. And so I bet you can guess next, echo, 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 and continue on. Now, a funny story, for people that try to quilt the swirl chain, which is that last one we saw in a bunch of different directions, sometimes newer quilters will start with this because they forget to make that 
wave. So you might already be ahead and on to the next variation. So look at it that way. And add another swirl wherever I want to, and then fill in the rest with those straight-ish, wavy-ish lines. Again, not stick straight. I'm not getting my ruler out, but I'm not adding extra wave to it either. Adding some more. And then again, when I run into those swirls, I want to travel along the swirl and then echo back out. That's what's going to make them look like those swirls are really popping out. And then above it, and like any filler design that you work with, I'm going to use echoing to maneuver my way around the area. So if I'm to the right of the swirl and I need to be back to the left, I can echo around the whole outside, which is what I've done there. And then fill in the area. When you get to quilting, it's not going to look just like this, right? You're going to go about it slightly different. Just look at, when you're not sure where to go, just stop and think, what do I need to fill in? How am I going to get there? And how am I going to fill it in? And I think you're going to find it's going to work out great. Now, for panels that are overly complex or areas that I don't want to add a lot of detail, I want it to just kind of be static, uh, this back and forth line is a great option. But even within that, we can add a little bit of detail. So these back and forth lines are kind of like matchstick quilting, except it's closer at the bottom and further apart at the top. You don't have to do that, but I do love how it just gives it a little bit of depth or perspective. Now, when we're quilting straight lines over the whole quilt, if I'm dealing with a big area, I don't really love quilting one straight line over the whole thing, only to come back. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking that matched it quilting and I'm breaking it up into columns and quilting it in sections to make it a little bit easier. So if you're working on a small throated sewing machine or you're just not comfortable going long distance, this is gonna be the perfect way to do it. So starting at the bottom, I worked my way up, quilting my back and forth lines in different widths. Right, if I'm gonna join my columns, I don't want them all to join the same place. I want them to be kind of staggered so that it all blends in. And it's up to you if you wanna change the width or just keep them all the same. If you spread them out, you're gonna have something that looks you know, really you know, flowy to it. And if you wanna make it more dense, you can make them closer together. But as I come down, I'm gonna add my second column. So I'm basically coming right back down making them kind of come close to each other, those back and forth lines, but making the other side, again, different widths. And what's really cool about this is your columns can be as wide as you want them to be, depending on what you're working on, what your preferences are. If I'm working on my long arm on a big quilt, they might be wider. It, it doesn't matter because it's the spacing between the lines that determines the density, not the width of your columns. So just make them a size that feels comfortable. And then as I get to the bottom, I'm gonna work my way up, filling in the rest of it, back up to the top. Again, trying to line up those back and forth lines or matchstick lines, not stressing out about it. This is a perfect example of that. It's a slightly different variation. So this particular quilt, I've used this several times in the um, like thread painting live chat stuff, but it's the same idea. I'm breaking up into columns, except instead of going in a curve, I'm stopping in a sharp angled line. And I think I have a closer picture of it. So you have to kind of look closely, but instead of having that curved bit, I'm going over coming down at an angle and coming back. So it's more of a geometric version of that matchstick quilting, but it just gives it a, just a different texture, just a slightly different look, especially if you want it to have that geometric kind of uh, shape. Now this is something I love to do with echo lines, and we're gonna see this in an upcoming episode of Midnight Quilter, where I use this as a way to break up my echo lines to make them easier to quilt if I'm working over a big area. But just know within that back and forth line, you can change up the, the size and have fun with it. And then you can see a little bit close-up picture above the clouds, that idea. And what's fun is that little pop of unquilted area where those two come close but don't actually touch, that's just going to give you that, that different texture and just kind of make it look interesting. And I was going back through all my old pictures. Whenever I'm getting ready for a live chat, I start pulling up all the past quilts. And it's kind of hard to see here, but when I went through and started filling in the sky, I was just putting in straight lines. I would go out and come back and then travel down but I actually use different colors. So along the right, it's a little bit darker yellow and the color that I'm quilting right there to fill in the space is a lighter yellow. So even within the idea of breaking it up into columns, you can change the thread colors as you go just to give it a different effect. Um, I would keep it similar just so you get a shaded or textured effect. I wouldn't necessarily go too crazy, but it's a fun way to use thread colors um, to really kind of give it some depth or to play with all your favorite thread colors. And I'm getting, I'm getting ready to land this plane, so if you're still hanging out, I appreciate it. If you just want to give it a nice texture, a nice all-over look, an elongated swirl going in all different directions is going to be one of the best ones to go with. 
It's great because there's not a lot of traveling, so you don't get the thread buildup that you can get with others, but it does have a nice look of movement without drawing your eye any one place. So in this particular instance, I'm quilting my swirls in all different directions and then filling in the areas with echo lines. The main difference here is I'm not worried that they're all going in the same direction and I'm not necessarily traveling. When I run into another swirl, I'm just bouncing right back. So they kind of have pointy ends, but what that's gonna do is prevent that thread buildup and prevent it from being distracting. So if you've tried some of the other options and you just feel like that traveling is not working for you or it's just drawing too much attention, this could be a great option. I mean, you could put a swirl on almost any quilt and it will look great. You're gonna be fine. So again, just a couple more examples of sky areas and, and how I've quilted it. This is one of those national parks panels. I love them, so much fun. Um, but a good question came up earlier on the type chat. Like, what, what if you're not into national parks, what other panels could you practice on? There are so many great fabric panels. I mean, just go to your shop go, or your local quilt shop, go online, I'm sure you can find something. You want a panel that has, you know, that you can see the quilting but you know, this also has some guides there. So I love the national parks because there's color shading that I can just fill in the colors with the different effects. And you don't have to commit to using one technique over the whole quilt. So even though I threw in a swirl, I switched the straight lines and continued on. I think that's the thing that you have to remember. You can have a plan, you can decide you're gonna do it one way, but if you get going, you don't love it, don't be afraid to switch it up because ultimately it, you'll get finished and that's the most important thing. So now I'm gonna switch back to the camera. That is a lot of pictures, a lot of talking, but I wanted to give you some options and then also the step-by-step. -step. I hope that you found that helpful. Um, but I'm sure there might be a few questions, a couple. How awesome is Jessica? That's probably one of the questions. Very awesome. I'm quilting a quilt with hot air balloons. Should I space the lines further apart to make it softer? Sure, if you, um, just remember though that any change in density is gonna draw attention. So I would keep the spacing the same but yeah, you can spread, the, spread all the lines apart and make it softer if you want. But if you really want that balloon to pop out, having that denser quilting behind it and having it lightly quilted in the balloon will make it pop out too. But let's be honest, if you have a panel with a beautiful hot, hot air balloon, there's probably not a lot that you could do to detract from it. So try not to worry too much about it. But yeah, you can definitely do that. While doing the clouds, would I suggest using a ruler like the clamshell until you get used to the motion or is it better to free motion? You can, you can definitely use a clamshell ruler um, kind of just practice with just some of the arc and reposition it, perfect. Especially if you want clouds that have that perfect kind of, you know, bubbly look. But some quilts might not need that. You might do something like the National Parks where those perfectly round ones can look a little bit more cartoonish. So maybe you want it to be a little bit more organic. The best thing I would suggest is to practice drawing out a few options. Um, and just know that if you're going along and you don't love it, I'd always err on the side of putting less inside because you can always add to it. It's not as easy to take away. So, Or try just a couple of clouds and see how you feel about it. But yeah, clamshell ruler would really help. Any tips for trying these designs on your regular machine? Absolutely, these designs are perfect for a regular machine. The reason I'm doing on long arm, it's a lot quicker and I could take pictures easily while I'm going. Breaking up that space with clouds or quilting your area, your, your sky, so that it's in sections is going to make it so much easier on your sewing machine so that you can work within an area and move on. So one thing I might not do, I might not do perfectly straight lines across the whole area if it's very, very wide. Like if it's the whole quilt, mm, I'm probably not going to do that. I would probably opt for some wavier ones just because I know I don't like quilting straight lines across the big area. So it's, it, they go together the same exact way, just sporadically or intentionally place your elements to help break up the space and make it easier. So that would be the best option. Lastly, I would say get comfortable or find what direction you feel comfortable quilting. If I'm on a long arm, I'm quilting my straight lines horizontally because that makes sense. On a sewing machine, I'm gonna quilt them vertically. So don't be afraid to change the orientation of your quilt to make it a little bit easier. So I hope that helps. Ooh, I would love to see how you quilt water. Any tips? Basically, just like I would quilt sky. It's kind of crazy. It's just whatever you quilt it on lends it, I don't know, some details. So your brain kind of sees it that way. So water. Um, a, that all over swirl would be pretty. That um, back and forth line that I did looks great for water and even changing the width will give it depth or just a nice wavy line across the area. It, it depends on what else is around. Like if it's all water and I have um, this element that I wanna show off, I might do some wavy lines and put some circles in between some of them to look like bubbles. That'd be a good option. So just think, think consistent texture, think movement. Probably wouldn't do straight lines because water usually moves, but any of those other ones would work, not the clouds, but 
You could do little clamshells. That'd be kind of cute. Pre-wound glide, uh, our magna pre-wounds, the same as the glide thread on top. Okay, magna glide pre-wounds, we're talking about pre-wound bobbins that go with the machine. And if you're talking about the magna glide, um, we're talking specifically long arms. So there are two types of glide pre-wounds. There are magna glide delights. So magna glide delights. Delights are the same thread as the top. So it's a 40 weight poly and it's the actual color of the top thread. So if it's magna glide delight cotton candy, it matches the cotton candy glide thread that you can get for the top. There are also magna glide classic. And classic are 60 weight and they don't match the glide colors. They're more like neutrals. So there's black, white, tan, gray. I like to use the Magna Glide Classic because the 60 weight holds more thread on the bobbin and I just use it in the neutral, neutral color in the value of what I'm using on top. So if I'm using like a dark pink on top, I might use a, a medium gray on the bottom. So I know that's confusing and for those of you that don't use pre-wound, you're like, this is boring, but Magna Glide Delights do match the glide. Magna Glide Classics are different. And that's been fun to try to, you know, Remember that as we're filling orders, <laughs> sometimes that comes in. I just purchased an Amara, congratulations. Long arming is so fun. Do you ever use Orafil in the bobbin? The dealer told me never to use it. I would say, I don't wanna contradict your dealer. Um, the long arms, the, any long arm can run any high quality machine quilting thread and Orafil is a high quality thread. You definitely run Orafil in your bobbins. Now you will have to change the tension for that. And what can happen if you're using cotton in your bobbin, you can get a little bit more lint in the bobbin area. So just make sure you're cleaning it out. But yeah, you can definitely run it in the bottom, run it on the top, as long as it's good quality. I wouldn't go to a chain store and get cheap, cheap thread because that's probably not gonna work well, but Orafil definitely. You do have to make some tension adjustments and your dealer might have been like, hey, just hang out with where I have it for you now and then adjust later, but yeah, you can. Will I ever offer more Zoom classes like the one I had last night, the all about long arms? So last night, um, I did a live chat a few weeks ago about the basis of long arming and I did a, made a little Zoom session that you could sign up for and it was so much fun. I had a blast. So yeah, I think I will do more like that. I, I think they were helpful. The um, feedback has been good so far and I know that I have a couple people in the live chat that were a part of that. It was just a fun way for you know them to get to ask questions and for me to do a presentation on something that's a little more specific that you know I don't think the whole my whole viewership wants to learn about long arms, but they definitely did. So yes, I look forward to having more or even some classes. It, it was just a lot of fun. At some point, will I go over how to best use a black or dark background and how to choose thread for that background? Okay, so yes. When you have a quilt that is black, especially if it's solid or dark, it's really hard to see the thread on there. It just sucks all the light. So if you're quilting an area like that and you're using a matching thread, get a side light turn off your overhead light, or if you're in your sewing machine, I cover it up with a piece of tape. You just wanna see the shadow of the quilting so you can see where you're going. Now, when I'm quilting those areas though, I kinda wanna see a little bit of the quilting when I'm done. Like I don't want to be super obvious, but I'm, if I'm taking time, I want to be able to see it. So if I'm working with a black fabric, I'll probably do a dark gray. Or if it's like a dark blue, I might just do a blue a shade or two lighter, just so you can see it. Now, if you're like, oh, I don't wanna do that, then you can match it if you want. But for the most part, you wanna see the quilting a little bit and using that, that dark, dark fabric really just absorbs the light and kind of hides it. And I will say the great thing about quilting dark fabric is everything looks good on it. When you're using lighter thread on darker fabric, you kind of get this cool effect and it, everything looks good. So it's a, a lot of fun. It's when you're working with a light fabric so you're like, well, I can't really do a dark pink because it's not gonna look great. So yeah, I think you'll be fine. Do I have any long arm classes coming up? Well, it just so happens I am gonna get the Handy Quilter truck in May here at the shop. I haven't put the dates out for that yet, so just say the date. It's the 11th through the 14th, is that right? Yeah, Jessica saying yes. Oh, she wrote it on there for me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so we'll have long arm, four days of long arm classes, and so I'll be announcing that pretty soon. So just keep an eye on the website, or I'll, I'll definitely announce it here. Um, long arm classes are a lot of fun, especially when I get the truck full of long arms and can do them hands on, so yes. Definitely. So say the date, May 11th through the 14th. Quilting is my therapy quilt shop. Well, I know I have went over a little bit. I usually try to keep these to 30 minutes, but I hope that you found it helpful or at least got some design ideas to add to your repertoire. Um, if you have any questions about them, again, you can leave them in the comment section. I would love to answer them and help you out. 
in next week's live chat, we're going to be switching subjects and we're going to be quilting arcs and clamshells with a Shelly ruler. So we'll talk about how to use a ruler and how to create those really cool arc, sh arc shapes with that Shelly ruler. I cannot wait. So next Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. Until then, everybody stay warm, stay safe, and I will see you then. Happy, happy quilting.